Hi, I'm Joshua Mapps. We've got here an Apple network in our house. An Apple wireless router creates it. I have that connected to a modem, and that's your central internet. Airport Express is a great way to extend that network. Now, you could use other devices like another Airport Extreme, but most people don't justify the cost when an Express can do the job just great. So here's what you're going to do. You've got two major options. Number one, and this is the absolute like guarantee that your internet is going to be rocking and rolling across your house. You're going to have this in one house. And here's the hard part. You're going to run Cat5. So on that other end of your house, or if this is in the basement and the upstairs is horrible internet, then you need to figure out a way to get that Cat5 cable ran from wherever this is to that opposite end, which most of us just can't do. Or we have plaster walls and it's just not possible. Uh, in those scenarios, you could just give up and go with the next thing we'll talk about, which is extending it wirelessly. Or uh, companies like us, Apt Electronics has a custom team that comes out, and we, we will run Cat5 wherever it needs to go. So lots of options for that. But if you could do it, it's like a guarantee. What you're going to do is you're going to run that Cat5 all the way across to your, your Airport Express. Uh, and that's going to be located somewhere that has like dead internet or really weak signals. And now you're not going to choose the extend option. Because extending a network is extending it wirelessly using an express. So don't choose that feature. What you're going to do is you're going to create a roaming network. So you're actually going to tell it to create a network. And you're going to give it the same network name with the exact same password and it down to the type of password encryption. So pay attention to how you program your main router or go back into Airport Utility to figure it out. It's, if it's WPA2, this needs to be WPA2 password also. So the settings are identical. The only catch is it needs to be in bridge mode. Okay, so when this is in bridge mode, that means it's not functioning as a router. It's not assigning IP addresses like the main router does. It's kind of just joining the network, and it's a part of the network, but it's creating a full blast signal. The only thing I'd reference here in this example is if I'm down in the basement and I got great internet, and I go up to the bedroom where my Airport Express is broadcasting a full strength network and my internet's really bad, it likes to hold those signals from far away until they clunk out and then it joins the new signal. So people that have roaming networks might find themselves toggling on and off their Wi-Fi signals just so that they automatically connect to the closest device that's creating Wi-Fi. So now, if you can't run that Cat5, you don't have that ability and you have this house of, of internet where there's a weak spot. There's a way to just plug this into the wall and extend the network wirelessly. But you need to be very careful how you do this because it's possible you're going to extend a really bad internet signal. So it looks like you've connected at full strength, but you go to watch a YouTube video and it's all choppy. In that example, you've plugged this in in the wrong spot. So what you need to do is you need to figure out what bandwidth you're getting. Because signal strength is misleading. You can have full signal bars and have one megabit per second when you're supposed to get 20. So you got to watch out for signal strength. How do you do it? Um, I'll show you an app on, on an iPod or iPhone or Android phone, and you're going to go open up this app, and you're just going to run a speed test. Do it next to your main router. Get a feel for what the maximum Wi-Fi bandwidth is. And these speed tests will show you on a little gauge how many megabits per second you're getting wirelessly. Then you're going to walk to that spot that's horrible in your house. And you're probably going to see, oh man, I, I used to get 20 downstairs and now I'm getting 0 0.02 megabits per second. I have bad internet. The goal, find the location between the bad spot and your main router that still has a really good signal. If I'm getting like 20 megabits per second in my basement, in my first floor, other side catches 10 megabits per second, still good internet. Anything around 10 or above is pretty decent. I could plug this in on that first floor other end because I know I am extending 10 megabits per second. So with doing that, you're pretty safe. If that other location has one megabit per second and I extend the range of that signal, well, you're not sending out a signal with lots of bandwidth. You're sending out a great signal that things have full signal strength, but they're getting one or less megabit per second. So be careful where you plug in your wireless Airport Express to extend any extreme. And you're really only doing this all with extending wirelessly with an extreme router or with a time capsule. So those are a couple great ways for you to extend your wireless internet in your house. That way you could really make use of that full bandwidth you're getting. And feel free to use those apps around your house backyard to figure out where you have your weak spots. 
Apt Electronics has a great level of support for Apple routers. We've got technicians that work in our building in Glenview, Illinois. Take your call if you need some help. If you have any other questions or concerns, let's hear some comments. Love to hear some feedback. And while you're here, subscribe to our YouTube channel.